Now, Jeff talked about a formula that farmers can use across the state to apply nitrogen, but if you want to be more precise for your fields, there are some tools available. Here to help us to understand those is Brian Arnall. Brian, tell us first of all about enriched strips. How do those really work in terms of determining that nitrogen? The enriched strip is real simple when it comes to basing whether you need nitrogen or you don't need nitrogen. I mean, it, it's easy 50 mile per hour test. If you have an enriched strip in the field, which is a high rate of nitrogen, placed out there pre plant or sometime soon after, you're driving by your field in January, February, or March, you see a green strip, you need to apply. It's, it's as simple as that. If you don't need nitrogen, it's not gonna be there. If you do need it, it's Absolutely. gonna stand out. If you don't out. need nitrogen, you'll never see it. And it, it's real obvious when they are standing out. All right, a lot of people seeing those right now that have them in the field? There are several on that early planted wheat that are seeing the enriched strips show up and there, there's gonna be a need, it looks like this year, both in wheat and canola. Uh, the nice thing that ties this back in with Jeff's talk about the two pounds of N per bushel, the enriched strip out there will guarantee that we won't have an N deficiency, which will maintain our protein at that 12, 11%, 12% level. Okay. Now, if we want to get even more precise than that, we've got the green seeker we can get involved. How do, where does that get for us? The green seeker actually gives us the, the, the real rate. The green seeker is going out there and giving us a predicted yield for both the enriched strip and that area next to it. And so if we can predict yield, we have a good idea, and it goes back to that two pounds of N per bushel. So if the enriched strip says it can make 40 bushel of wheat, the farmer practice, which is that area next to it, can make 30 bushel of wheat, there's a 10 bushel difference, we're probably gonna need somewhere around 20 pounds of nitrogen. And with protein, as long as you have enough nitrogen, you use, we won't have a problem with low protein values. Okay, now there's a lot of talk this year about protein, a lot more than we normally hear on the subject. Why is the real focus this year that the, way. the protein issues coming up with the Kansas City Board of Trades values that they've assigned. Anything between 11% to 10.5% is going to get a 10 cent per bushel dockage. Okay. Anything below that 10.5 is to be rejected. Uh, so there's a lot of concern, uh, especially after last year's crop uh, in some of our areas such as southwest Oklahoma where we had really high yields, unaccustomary high yields and low protein issues. They were seeing 9% protein down there. There's a lot of concerns with this year. What we have to remember is that protein is closely tied with yield. As we gain yield, as our yield increases and goes up, we're going to see lower proteins, mm -hmm. uh, especially above that 40 bushel mark. If you're growing 25 bushel wheat, your proteins are typically going to be fairly high. That's 12, 13 percent. Okay. Uh, long term, we've been watching at our Lahoma long term uh, site, we've been watching yields increase over the last 30 yields years and proteins decrease over the last 30 years. So they've gone from an average of 15 and a half percent somewhere. Uh, 2010's average was uh, 12 and a half percent. But we see as long as we maintain proper fertility, we don't see an issue with uh, proteins dropping below 11 percent. We had large scale trials out last year, last two years, and we've talked about that in the past, where right. we go out on producers' fields, apply their rate, and apply the sensor-based rate. Right. And a lot of people have been worried that the sensor is going to underapply nitrogen and potentially mess with protein. Well, out of the 14 sites, there's only one site that the sensor had a protein less than 12 percent. Okay. That same site, the farmer practice had protein less than 12 percent. So really not so, a sensor problem there? It's not a sensor problem. In fact, everywhere we, we use the sensor, we're seeing proteins at a good value uh, where nobody would be having a discount. All right, so this year we're thinking people really can get the, get the protein up and have good yep. yield still. Protein can be up. And if somebody's truly worried about protein, there's been research performed at OSU in the late 90s that showed 20 to 30 pounds of N applied at that flowering right before or right after flowering with UAN uh, can, can raise your protein by 2%. But at this point in time, you, you have to have a premium to pay for that or have to have a real scare that you aren't going to make that. You really need to do the math before they go out in the field. You have to do the math before you go out in the field. All right, good information as always. Brian Arnell.